Wedging clay is a skill that when learned properly can benefit a potter for years when working in clay. This video is going to show how I teach my students how to wedge clay to make the clay um, an even homogeneous mixture and to eliminate air bubbles. Having properly wedged clay is probably most critical when you're on the wheel because air bubbles and inconsistent clay are always detrimental. When choosing a wedging surface, you want something to be at a good height for you, something where you can lean over and get your body weight uh, over the clay as you're pushing down on it. Um, I have a couple of uh, different uh, items that can be used back here in my classroom as wedging tables. So this one has, it's made as a wedging table and it does have adjustable height. However, I have it set to the lowest possible setting. It is too high for me comfortably to wedge at. It does have a wire, which is great. The wire is there so you can just slice your, your clay as you're wedging. But because I'm 5'5", five five, um, I like something that's a little bit shorter. So this table is more appropriate for me because I can lean into the table and lean onto the clay as I wedge. And it allows me to really use my, my uh, upper body weight just to lean into it. So I'm using more, more or less my body weight to wedge rather than my physical strength of my arms. So this clay that I'm using is pugged in my classroom. But even if you're using pugged clay, it's really good to know how to wedge. Um, so you can combine clay if you need to, say for instance, if you have, say like this, this was all just scrap clay that needs to be wedged. Um, I'd like for all of my students to know how to wedge and wedge properly. Now, when wedging, the most important thing is you're pushing the clay into itself and kind of rolling it into itself without trapping air. So as I do this, I want to be careful not to flatten it out too much. One of the mistakes I see kids make is they flatten it and then they fold it over. Now, when you do that, you've just trapped two big giant air bubbles in there. So I can wedge those out. And again, I'm doing it by rotating it into itself and carefully doing it without getting a lot of air. Now, what I'm doing here is called a spiral wedge because you can see I'm using my left hand as a pivot point. I'm right-handed and this way works for me. This is what I typically do and I end up with a piece that is almost conical in shape. Now, this is one method. Another method would be to go straight on. So in the case of this, I'm gonna push straight and then rotate it. So this, Sometimes they call this like the ram's horn method. This is more symmetrical and you're wedging it uh, equally pretty much on both sides. So they call it the ram's horn because if you look at it like that, ta -da, it's supposed to be like a face and with ram's horns. Um, you want to find whatever method of wedging works best for you that you're most comfortable with. But again, finding the right height is pretty optimal. So I can lean over again, and I'm just using my body weight more so than my arms. Now, when you have wedged and you are pretty sure that you have incorporated the clay together, you want to make sure that any clay that was drier, any clay that was wetter has been nicely incorporated together. Um, if you are going to be throwing, the next step would be to really smooth out that bottom to eliminate any big dents and stuff. If you are throwing, you want to start with something round. Um, I'm always amazed when I have students who don't think about that. They come back with a bare, big square block and they want to start throwing from a square. If you're making something round, start with something round. Now, if you're doing a much bigger piece, you might find it easier to go ahead and wedge together a couple pieces first, then wedge together another piece, and then you can put those together. Here I wanted to show you the use of the wire. For this, I can take the clay and I can cut it 
back and forth. And when I separate the slices, I can see whether or not I have air bubbles in there, okay? If you have air bubbles, then you need to keep on wedging. If you have a lot of air bubbles, you need to see what you might be doing wrong. But the slicer is a nice way that you can um, incorporate it a little bit more easily. What I do is I slice and then I do a slam. Um, so I'm slamming it down uh, vertically. So as I slam it down, any air bubbles that are in there have just shot out to the side. And then I can take the next piece, slam it down on top of that. So you're realigning all the particles and you're, uh, you took what was horizontal and you made it vertical. And, and again, it's realigning everything. And then I can continue to wedge. Oh, and one other thing about the wire, if you're using a wire, say like this, I did it before, but always clean the wire off. You don't wanna leave your crusties on there because then you come over here and you get dry crusties in your clay on accident. Sometimes when I'm wedging up a lot of clay, whether it's several small pieces or fewer very large pieces, um, I might plan on wedging it up the day before, bagging it tightly, and then coming in the next day to throw it because it can be quite exhausting. Even though I did say I'm using my upper body weight I certainly am using my arms too, but uh, leaning into it and using your upper body weight makes a huge difference. So if you're a little weaker or something, you might want to wedge it up the night before if you find that might help. But I wouldn't let it sit longer for then just overnight really. And of course, keep your wedged prepped clay in a bag until you're ready to use it.